folks. Thanks for tuning in. I got me a package here from Ikea in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Let's open her up and see what's in it, shall we? That's it. And then this. This gigantic paper bag padded for two packs of batteries. Thanks, Ikea. Okay, I got me some Lada. Lada? I don't know, I don't speak Swedish. I think Ikea is Swedish. Anyway, some 2,450 milliamp hour nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries. And these are the double A's at 1.2 volts. Then again with the uh, milliamp hours there. Little guy says read some instructions. I got some instructions here, but uh, I'm not gonna read those. We're gonna take a look at these. I have no idea. Let's take a look. How does this work? There we go. Very pretty. So it is the Lada Lada, however that said. 2450 IKEA. Oh, I don't know. there we go. Thailand. Don't throw it away. Recycling Japan. Nickel metal hydride. Again with the uh, 1.2 and 2450 amp hours. Ooh, stay. Let's open up the other one. worth noting that these this is just paper no plastic just paper completely recyclable and I did that so here we are we have four of them and we're going to see how they work in the Yezu FT818 so let's see if they fit Uh, you may have seen previously on some other videos that I did with the EBL batteries, they didn't quite fit just right. So we're gonna see if these do. But first we gotta get, we gotta adios these Amazon ones. Okay, we got those out of the way. So let's, uh, let's get these Ikeas in. Which way do these go? Positive is this one. Ooh, I like that. Straight off the bat, they're fitting better than uh, some of the other rechargeable ones that I've tried to sneak in here. Same problems as I had before with the batteries not uh, fitting quite right or, or what have you. So we're just gonna give them a snug and a tug. Try again. Well, crap. Okay, folks, we have the same problem as we had with the other ones. Look at this. You can wiggle that back and forth. That's not making a good contact right there because this battery is a little bit too tight up against here and it's not allowing it to uh, slide around. There's a spring down in here that should be pushing it, springs in the tray, battery tray that should be pushing it this way. But this battery is so snug in there and it does not want to. Let's push it. Ah, there you just gotta 
You got a fadangle, fadiggle, wiggle, mess with it a bit. Make sure they're in there good. That being said, these are going in a lot easier than some of the other nightmare batteries I've tried to squeeze into here. This one's real bad too, with it not being the one I want to. I can slide the whole battery. But <clears throat> we're gonna try. So I've been messing around with this for just a few moments. We have the batteries in the tray, outside of the radio, and she powers on. Just fine. So do these fit in here? Physically, yes. It's so tightly in there that it's not making a connection between. So you have this little spring here, here, and some on the other side. But when this battery tray is in the radio, the batteries are too snug for the springs to push the batteries together. So we end up with a small gap in there because you have to, the way that this is set where the batteries slip underneath there, you have to push the battery in to get this this one down in there and it's squeezed so tight that it's not allowing the spring to push the battery back forward and you can't just push it back because well it's metal there now i'm not entirely sure if that is due to it being squeezed this way from the top down i'm more inclined to believe that it's being squeezed this way from the sides simply due to the fact that these do not really want to rotate, that one does a bit, but they really don't want to rotate all that much. Whereas like Zamazon or just cheapo alkalines, you put them in here and they just spin freely. So I'm thinking that's probably the issue. Um, should be easy enough to fix, but something to think about. Let's uh, pull these out of here and uh, talk a little bit more about them. Alrighty then, got our batteries out of the tray and got our trusty fluke 107. Flip that to that. Turn our light on so we can see better. Hey, look at that glare. That'll do. Grab our testy leads. Now these do um, come in the packaging ready to use, which in my mind means they're like pre-charged, or at least to some degree. So these are supposed to be 1.2 volts. Is that right? Yeah. Whoa. Right there, 1.2 volts. So let's give a test, shall we? I would just stab myself in the finger with these. Yep. 1.3. Very nice. 1.3. So far, so good. 1.311. One three twelve. Uh, I got these off of the uh, IKEA site proper for $7.99 for a four pack of them. So you can math that out for two packs plus a wee bit of shipping. They are also, I've seen them on Amazon with free shipping for Prime, but they were a bit more, I think somewhere like uh, $10 and seven cents or nine and some cents. Not exactly sure how much it was, but. Uh, you saw what those read too, so they do come pre-charged. Now these are nickel metal 
hydride batteries and I happen to have a charger for those. For the EBLs, the USB smart charge. So let's get the charger out. Take a look about these ones. So this will charge nickel metal hydride as well as nickel cadmium. So let's use this charger on the IKEA batteries. Ah. And we'll see how long they take to receive a full charge from Fresh. Didn't make any sense. Anyway, I've done a video on these EBL 2800 nickel metal hydrides, as well as EBL's lithium ion rechargeables. So if you like watching me, or you never see me, but if you like listening to me and looking at my hands, uh, go give those videos a watch. But uh, that looks pretty nice. Now IKEA does have their own line of chargers, but uh, I already have this one. So downside of this one being it is USB, which takes forever to charge. So yeah, we'll get them over there on the power and see how long they take. Okay, so we're over here by an outlet. Got our batteries, charger, charging cable, charging brick. Again, we're not reviewing the charging setup, just the batteries themselves. So let's get them into the wall, power, and give a look-see at how long they take to charge up from fresh out the box. There we go. The time is 4.30 on the dot, on the dot. Excellent, 4.31. So check back when uh, all the lights turn green. See you then. Okay, folks, it is, what is it? 6.59, so we'll say 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, put these on if I remember correctly at around 4.30. So math, it's what, three and a half, maybe four hours. It's fully charged up. Let's get them back over there and uh, see how they work. See you then. Okay, folks, we're back at the table here now with our uh, IKEA Laras, all fully charged. Would you like a look at these? I mean, not one for industrial style or I mean, you don't look at a battery, but I do like the look of this. I like that. I think it's Swedish. I don't know. I'm sure some fancy and industrial designer had a whack at making these look pretty or not. I don't know. Either way, I dig it. And uh, I think a little car. I got a little car, a little flashlight, a little game controller. I don't know. Maybe it's like a Xbox station or something. So, yeah, we got them there. <clears throat> Let's put them in here. What am I doing? So yeah, that took about, uh, well, we put them on at 4.30, it's 7, 5, 6, 7, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's uh, three and a half hours. Starting to run into the same issue as I did with some of the other rechargeables, where they're just they're too wide. I don't know, maybe one day I'll get around to getting a hold of a pair of calipers and doing some actual measurements instead of just, hey, they seem to be wide. I don't know. But I do think I may have had too much coffee this morning. Oh. Yeah, see, that just went right in. That's not even, I don't see that. That's not even touching. You gotta take this and you gotta get it over a bit. Now it's touching. Oh well, there it is. The IKEA Alada 2450 milliamp hour batteries, double A's, nickel metal hydride rechargeables. They kind of fit in here, but kind of don't. Uh, so I'm gonna have to say that's a pass. A no work, not recommend because you just gotta futz with it way too. Oh, those are warm. 
Oh, so annoying. You just gotta futz with it too much to get it to work. And that was dumb. I should have put the in there first and then the batteries. Hmm. At any rate, so I don't know if. Well, I certainly do not. What in the world? It's like a USB plug. There we go. I most certainly do not want to modify the radio. I mean, I could go and dremel this out, you know, and make room for them to fit. I did try to get my, my thinners in there and, and try to lift it up a bit, and that nah, didn't really work all that well. I found some cheap old piece of metal and kind of give it a little snug of a pry there, but it bent the tool. So, you know, good on you, Yezu, for bending tools when I try to, you know, mess your stuff up. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to figure out some way to get this battery tray to fit in here with rechargeables and actually work. It's just ever, ever so slightly, oh, excuse me, sorry about that, ever so slightly too big, which is a bummer. But at any rate, thank you so very much for watching. You have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Friendship is magic.